Hello, how's it going? Welcome to episode three of my Ret Pug to Good series where we are racing Ret Paladin to a 20 key, to timing a 20 key as fast as possible from fresh old gear. So we started with roughly, I think it was 240 item level and double legendaries and we had three weeks left of the season to be able to time a 20. The aim of the series was really just to try and get a feel for how good Ret is in Mythic Plus and I can tell you already, I love the spec again. It's super simple whilst having a bunch of utility for everyone else in the group. So I've absolutely fallen in love with it. I'm going to try and carry it forward to the next season as one of my alts. I think I'm going to try and main Windwalker, but I'm definitely going to try and keep playing Rhett as well. Um, because like I said, I absolutely love the spec. Um, last thing to mention before we run the intro then, I don't really feel like a content creator at the minute because I'm just sort of hovering around 300 subscribers. So if you guys could try and give me a bit of help out, give me a subscribe, give me a thumbs up, that would be awesome. I know that stuff really helps with the YouTube algorithm. After my self-plug then, let's actually run the intro for the series. Enjoy. First things first then, let's have a look at what we get in the vault. We're hovering around 250 item level, so this could be huge. Or maybe it won't be. I mean, we got absolutely unreal look on our Windwalker, so it's got to end at some point, right? Okay, so we got nothing. <laughs> the trinket's useless, the ring's useless. I say useless, I mean, it's got haste on it, so it's alright. Yeah, and a crit... First 275 item level cloak. Alright, who cares? Anyway, the um the ring's probably best here. I don't think the trinket's good at all, and uh, there's no point in taking a 275 cloak with bad stats on it. I may as well take the ring with bad stats. It's still a bit of an upgrade. Um and verse is never bad. I always like verse. Um it helps reduce damage, so good. After that amazing vault then, I accidentally forgot to record what my starting gear was for that week. So you're seeing a still frame from the first key that we did, which was a Theory of Pain. And this is the gear that I had at the end of that dungeon when I hadn't equipped anything else. Major things to note are we've still only got a 226 item level weapon. We do have four set. So in the last dungeon of last week's episode, we did get four set. Oh, sorry, we had four set going into that last dungeon. And we have 255 item level, so still lots of item level to improve on. Although with only eight keys left before the end of the season, I don't really know if it's going to be possible to gain much more item level. But to be honest, it doesn't really matter. This item level is fine for pushing 20s in, so we should be good. With that being said, let's jump into the first key then, which like I've just mentioned was a theater of pain. And we're actually going to go through the theater in a bit more detail because it's one of the few dungeons that we didn't cover in... The previous Windwalker series and although it doesn't really matter um, because the new season's coming out I'm gonna have a new dungeon pool I just felt like it would be I mean maybe it'll help one person so at least it'll be a bit more useful you know we've covered most of the dungeons so I wanted to do a theory of pain here I will say that next season most of the content's gonna be much more useful then because obviously we've got a new dungeon pool, so there'll be more new information which you can actually learn from and the content will just naturally become more educational because of that. So I'm hoping next season's gonna be a bit better. But like I said, because I haven't done a theater of pain yet, I may as well do it once um, for the, the season three stuff and hopefully it can at least help one of you in the last week of pushing. Um, even if it helps one, I'm, I'm happy with that. Anyway, I've waffled on for long enough. Let's get into the theatre. So it's actually not too bad of a key, to be honest, on Tyrannical Weeks. Um, I mean, obviously it is pretty bad. There's lots of bosses. The bosses are pretty hard. I just mean that actually a lot of the trash is pretty difficult in theatre as well. And non-fortified weeks, the trash becomes significantly easier. So I actually don't mind it too much on a Tyrannical Week. Um, anyway... The first pack then. 
we have a Ritualist, two Contenders, and a Raging Bloodhorn. So the Ritualist has this cast here called Unholy Favor, which you want to interrupt. It heals the mob. You can then also interrupt the bolts. It's just a uh, random damage. The two contenders, they're mainly for the tanks to deal with, and then there is the Raging Bloodhorn. So the Bloodhorn has a really dangerous AoE cast, this here, Raging Tantrum. You need to soothe that off immediately. Um, you can see even in this 18 non-fortified week, that was doing a lot of damage to the group. So you need a Hunter, Druid, or Rogue to be able to soothe that off ASAP. It can't be stopped, it has to be soothed. The only other thing to note is that this is pretty strange the way that we're pulling here. Normally you would pull the Raging Bloodhorn onto the boss and leave these three adds to do at the very end of the dungeon, but we've decided not to and we're going to come onto the first boss of the dungeon then and a front of challenges. So this is a council style fight. Um, you have three different abilities really to try and keep track of that you want to at least play around as a DPS player anyway. The first is from Sathel, so Sathel the Accursed here. He has a Searing Death cast, which you can see now. You want to try and interrupt that. And then he becomes uninterruptible below, I think it's 40% HP. So you need to pop a defensive if you get targeted by that when he's uninterruptible. The next boss then, Pace Ran, which is a an apt name for him. Basically will TP away sometimes and then has to be interrupted to come back into the pack. And we'll also do this opportunity strikes here, which you can see the druids just instantly stopped. So it's not a particularly good example. But basically, um, every once in a while, opportunity strikes will be casted. And then one of the group will be stunned. The player that's stunned is stunned by a little ad. And you need to try and CC that off as soon as possible. You can use anything, so AoE stuns, AoE um, disorients like the druids just done here, as well as, say, single target stops. Um, so here you can see, again, I think the druids just immediately uh, use raw to to get rid of it. But you want to be using CCs as soon as possible, because obviously then it frees up a member to do more damage. It also hurts at higher key levels and needs to be stopped after one or two ticks at most. The final boss then is Desia and it's basically just uh, a mob, or sorry, a boss for the tank to deal with. It has a mortal strike effect and again it enrages below 40% HP and you can soothe it. So hunters, druids, rogues, be aware of that. Otherwise this boss is pretty simple. Make sure you're kicking Seer and Death. Try and kick Pace Ran back into the group if you've got a range kick and also get rid of opportunity strikes as soon as possible. After the first boss then you'll drop down and there's various options with where you want to go. We're heading towards the Kulth Rock Wing, so obviously this is the first thing that we'll cover. But honestly in pug groups you could probably head to any one of the wings at a time. This first pull of the Kulth Rock Wing then has Shackled Souls. Now Shackled Souls are incredibly deadly. They have two abilities which just randomly target party members and deal damage. So you want to try and just use defensives here. You're never going to be able to really tell if you're getting targeted, so you always want to use defensive. And you just want to interrupt whenever you can. It's usually AoE stops that you want to use, um, but you can also single target interrupt. You can see here, we managed to lose some on That was actually to Bursting, really, but it was a combination of damage from the adds as well as Bursting. Um, so, yeah, really deadly, even on non-fortified uh, and also on lower keys. Definitely try and use the defensives there. We'll skip through this pack then because it's just the same set of souls. The next add after that though, the Portal Guardian is incredibly deadly. So it's got two abilities that you want to keep track of. The first one is this Soul Storm. So here you can see it's mass AoE damage to the group. And then it also has this Curse. As you see there's a Curse on the Hunter. That's increasing the damage taken by the Hunter. So I think it increases Shadow Damage and the Soul Storm is Shadow Damage. So you can see here, I'm just trying to remind the the Druid to decase um, because whoever's got the decase on is most likely going to die, especially at higher keys. It's uh, it's really deadly, so you have to watch out for that. Next, then we have some small platforms with these mobs on called bone maguses. So these bone spears, you really need to kick um, at higher key levels, especially. It's just going to one shot people if those casts go through. So you need to try and kick those. You can't stop them. So you can see here. We stun a cast there, actually I think the warrior interrupted beforehand, but um, if you do stun them then they're just going to immediately cast the bone spear again afterwards, so it's really kicks that you want to watch out for. So there you see one of those went through, 
and I just die. So it's really deadly and you need to be on the watch out for those. This next pack is absolutely brutal then. So we have the Portal Guardian, deadly. We have the Bone Magus, also deadly with casts. And then we have this new mob. So the new mob has this cast which needs kicking and then it also does this magic damage debuff which trucks. So you can see here I use bubble and you need to use a defensive if it's on you and you aren't dispelled. Because this pack is so brutal then I try and hold defensives and defensives for this pack if possible and also keep on top of kicks. If you're a healer you might want to keep throughput for this as well. On to the next platform then, so now we have a Bone Reaver plus two Maguses. The Bone Reaver is a bit of a mini boss, it's the only version of this mob in the dungeon I think. And basically it has uh, two things you want to keep track of. The first is the um, Bone Spikes which are coming out of the floor and they're a green swirly on a pretty faint green background. And then there's also this Bone Storm. So the Bone Storm is just a whirlwind and the boss moves around. If you're a melee, just walk away from it. It's deadly. Again, if you're in it, you're probably just going to die. Um, and you only lose a couple of globals, so just walk out of it. And the bone spikes, again, just keep an eye on it. Try and make sure you're moving out of them. This is the bone spikes cast then, so you can see green swirlies on a green background. Can be sort of hard to see. Just make sure you're moving and you should be fine. The final platform before Call the Rock then, we have a bone magus as well as a soul binder. So that's two high priority interrupts to keep track of, which you can see here, I managed to miss my kick. And then there is a new mob called a Dark Speaker. So the first ability which you want to keep track of is the Curse, which you can see the Hunter's got and his purple swirlies being formed underneath him. If you stand in those, you're going to get feared. And then the second mechanic is a Frontal, which is really, really deadly on this platform because if you get hit by it, it's going to knock you off the platform and is an immediate one shot. So you just saw an example there, it's like a big green swirling tornado and is often it's actually quite hard to see which direction it's going in so you really want to try and focus on that mob. The shotgun weak aura which I'm using is super helpful here so I'll link that in the description again. On to Cool the Rock then, so the second boss that we're pulling in theatre. This boss is no joke and specifically if you don't have a warlock it can be really really hard to heal. Um, Warlock brings an extra magic dispel and most of the damage coming out on this fight is due to magic dispels so if you can bring a Warlock absolutely do you can see here the warrior has just instantly died to the dot um, and then the second mechanic which I'm targeted by here is called draw soul and you have to go and stand in these green hands to keep you in place again higher keys especially tyrannical weeks you're going to take a lot of damage there so you may want to try and use defensives it's a huge overlap if you get this mechanic here, so the Parasite debuff. It does a lot of damage and if you get the overlap where you're taking damage from the magic debuff as well as draw soul, you absolutely have to pop a defensive into that. And you might even have to pop a health potion as well. So you can see here we're coming up to one of these overlaps, there's about to be a draw soul cast and there's also going to be a Parasite cast going out. So the Hunter gets Parasite here and also gets the draw soul cast and hasn't been dispelled so he ends up popping tail which is very well played by him i also used sack there just in case he didn't pop a defensive otherwise this boss is only really hard if you don't have a warlock which we don't um i didn't think it was going to be that much of an issue at this key level but even at an 18 tyrannical weeks it hurts more than enough that you're going to want to bring a warlock for that magic dispel otherwise the fight is just the same two mechanics on repeat the only thing to notice is that for the draw soul cast, you actually get a damage buff after that, so a damage amplification, and you want to try and make use of that, so save your CDs until you've got the damage percentage increase. On to the next wing then, so the Zav wing. We have the first pack here, which is two conscripts and an arbalist. The conscripts don't really do anything, they just focus the tanks, but the arbalists do a lot of damage, so shoots a random targeted uh, party members and then they also have this bleed here so that's called a quarrel and that bleed hits like a truck so use defensives whenever you see obelisk packs there is a pack later on which has got two of them in which you definitely need to try and save defensive for and you also potentially want to use things like Kyrian part or dwarf racial and try and save those for these packs we also have a mini boss here so dockig this boss um mini boss is one of two so you can pull uh, either or in this area basically there's two fighting each other and 
the last one to use a melee swing when you walk into range of the mob will be the one to survive and then that's the mini boss that you're going to be fighting so that's a neat little trick if there's a certain mob that you want to fight so for instance this mob doesn't have any um, unavoidable damage everything's avoidable other than the the tank damage so you might want to try and favor this one you can time it basically to make sure that you're going to get this mini boss just by walking into range of the of the boss after it's been the last one to use a melee hit otherwise for docking just make sure that you're avoiding this leap here and then you're also kicking the battle trance cast on to the next mini boss then so again we've managed to get heaven here so this guy does have some unavoidable damage the interrupting roll there he also has this frontal cast on the tank the ground smash so watch out for that but otherwise just try and use defensives on the interrupting roar if you can. You can also line these. So if you see where the hunter's standing, there's like a little um, alcove next to the stairs. You can line those casts at higher keys, especially on fortified weeks, but at higher key levels, you definitely want to try and avoid that damage for the healer. On to the next pack then. So this is a pack that I mentioned earlier. There is a new mob in here, the Ancient Captain. The Captain itself reduces the damage that the rest of the mobs around you are taking uh, damage from area of effect abilities by 75%, so you need a single target down the, the captain. And then you have two Arbalists in here, which are railing you with the shoots and also the bleeds. So they do a lot of damage. Try and use defensives into this pack if you can, and also try and keep offensives lined up so that you can nuke the captain really quickly. This pack is much, much easier if you have a... DK with you so either a frost DK or a blood DK unholy doesn't really want to try and take the mob to be honest but if you have a blood DK for example they can control and dead the captain and then obviously you don't have to fully single target and focus down a mob first before killing off the arbalists you see here even on a non fortified week at an 18 we're really struggling to keep up with the damage here um, I didn't have cooldowns and I'm using most of my holy power for healing um, so I didn't do much damage. If I'd had damage, that would have gone much smoother. So I, tr I should have tried to play that to uh, to keep wings up for that pack, to be honest. So the next mini boss that we get then is Advent Nevermore. So yeah, she has this unbreakable guard. You just have to move behind her to do damage. You can't do damage from whichever way the shield is facing. She then has this ricocheting blade, which is a bleed on a random target, um, a random party member. You can avoid that by, again, using the alcoves on the stairs. So at higher key levels, again, especially fortified weeks, that's something that you want to try and use. Um, and then she also has, yeah, this seismic stomp, which is unavoidable damage. Um, you want to try and pop defensives into the seismic stomp if it's on higher keys and you're not going to be able to avoid the damage. Next that we're going to move on to then is Zav. So the third boss that we're going to be killing in this dungeon. Um, Sav's definitely a hard boss. Again, another pug killer here. He has a few abilities which are hard to deal with. The first is the oppressive banner. So he's going to spawn a, another mob. This oppressive banner here you can see in pink. Um, that is going to slow movement speed by a stacking amount. So the longer that this banner is alive, the slower your movement speed is going to be. And these abilities here that he's using. So the slams, etc. The, the green damage on the floor. That is incredibly hard to avoid if the banners have been up for too long. Um, and at some point, so like here, the hunter and warrior have been sent down into the arena below. They then have to fight each other and the winner of that will get a damage increase and the, the loser will get a damage decrease. Um, but here you can see I'm the only one, well, there's the me, the tank and the healer, sorry, but I'm the only DPS left hitting this banner. So you need to try and hard swap onto that. There are some tactics at much higher key levels where you leave the banner alive and use movement abilities and or learn the patterns of the boss so when he's going to do this cleave for example and when he's going to do this crush so that you can pre-move and avoid him um, but I would highly recommend in any pugs really you just want to swap and kill off the, ba uh, the banners themselves um, it can be really annoying because the banners have got quite a lot of HP so sometimes it feels like you're barely getting any damage into the boss um, it's it's just a, a boss that takes a long time because of that and uh, you have to just sort of play around it and use your damage into the, into the banners whenever possible. The only other mechanic then is the Blood and Glory which you can see here. 
it essentially forces myself and the warrior to duel and then whoever wins the duel um, gets a damage increase so you can see here I've just used damage CDs I wouldn't pop big CDs into it but if you've got like small 30 second CDs definitely use them one thing to say is do not use defensives do not interrupt or anything like that just do your normal damaging rotation other than using like two minute plus CDs um, and whoever wins is the person that wins. You just sort of want to get the duel over as quickly as possible without using all of your major damage CDs. Otherwise, just hard swap to the banners, dodge stuff on the floor, and also try and use defensives when he first jumps into the center of the room on each of the banner casts. Onto the final boss wing then, the gore chop wing. So this wing has a lot of the same trash um, the first things to watch out for are these spewers here so this withering discharge cast um, a it does a lot of aoe damage but b it also leaves a uh, damage reduction and healing reduction disease on all the party members so it's a really nasty interrupt and you definitely want to kick it um, Otherwise, the other thing to note is with those mobs, they jump out to party members, so try and stack up, and then when they die, they leave a green pool swirly on the floor, so you have to try and avoid those. So you're almost doing a bit of a dance, ranged or move in to stop them jumping too far away, and then you have to move out to make sure you're not getting hit by these green pools on the floor. Otherwise, the other mob that you can see here, then the putrid butcher, we're just about to pull another one as well. Um, they have a fairly high priority stop, not this chop cast. So the chop cast doesn't really matter. It's just going to hit the, the closest target and do damage. It should mostly hit the tank. Um, but then there is also a devour flesh cast, which is the cast that you do want to try and stop. So that cast heals the butcher for, I think it's 300% of the damage that it deals. Next, we skip the gas bag so you can just walk around this and most pugs will do that. And we're on to a pack which has got most of the same mobs that we've already been through and then it's also got a diseased horror so the diseased horror does a stacking disease debuff on the tank which reduces max hp so you want to try and stop that and there's also this meat shield cast which you want to interrupt as it gives a shield to the mob and obviously you don't want it healing too much as with before because there's a spear in the pack if you can stack up as ranged and then move out for these green pools always try and remember that those green pools are going to spawn it's a a really easy mechanic to die to and it does a lot of damage um the smallies which i think we're about to pull here as well or maybe we'll just pull a gas bag actually but there's also a bunch of smallies um in some areas and they drop the green pools on the floor so you really need to watch out for those um the gas bags then so the main thing is that it's doing taking aoe damage so it does a lot of damage to the group again especially at higher key levels on fortified weeks and it also does this dual, yeah, so front and back um, eruption, which again does a lot of damage. So you need to watch out for it. And it also fills up the room with these green swirlies on the floor. So it's mainly dodge, but also just watch out for your HP because you're constantly taking damage. Yeah, so here, this is what I mentioned before. There's a bunch of smaller ads with the spewer. All of these ads jump and also drop the green swirlies on the floor. So you have to really be trying to pay attention to where and when the mobs die so that you're not standing in those green pools. You can see here the hunter almost gets one shot on an 18 tyrannical week, so fortified weeks, higher key levels, obviously gonna do a lot of damage. On to Gorchop then, the fourth boss that we're pulling. He's probably the easiest boss in the dungeon, but still incredibly punishing, so you have to watch out for what you're doing. The main mechanic in this fight is the meat hooks. So you'll see in a second, I think I'll get hit by it. But the meat hooks, essentially, um, they move across the room and then the, uh, there's this little gap which you have to move through. And the reason why it's really deadly, usually it's pretty easy to, to dodge through, but the boss is also going to grip you in at some points. So he will cast this tenderize and smash sometimes um, here, and you can see he's just gripped in the priest. And that grip... A, it's pulling you to where the boss is, so if the boss isn't in a great position and then these meat hooks are in the wrong position, you're going to get caught by that. Um, but also, it's almost like a mini little stun, so it can really mess you up when it's close to the meat hooks. The meat hooks, if you do get hit by them, they're going to stun you and they're also going to apply a bleed to you that does a lot of damage, so make sure that you aren't getting hit by, by the meat hooks. 
Um, and the biggest tip that I've got is to play in melee. Even if you're ranged, play in melee on this fight. So you can see I'm never actually getting gripped in by the Tenderizing Smash cast because I'm in melee. He only grips you in and applies like a mini stun if you're further than melee away from him. So if you're just following the tank around and playing in melee, even if you're ranged, then you're going to have a much easier time getting into the, the right sort of um, columns to get through the meat hooks. If you do get hit by the meat hooks, you will have to pop a defensive as it does quite a lot of damage. The only other thing to note then is that he also spawns adds whenever he spawns the meat hooks. So these leftover adds, they lose HP naturally themselves. So you don't technically have to deal damage to them, even though I am padding and using Divine Storm here. Um, but they do uh, some damage when they jump away. So if you can cleave onto them, you probably do want to. Um, and they also leave these green pools on the floor, which are a nasty slow. So you want to try and note where they are and you won't be able to run through them to avoid the meat hooks so just plan around that you know if you see them in front of you just don't walk through them when you're trying to get into the right spot for the meat hooks otherwise the only thing to really think about definitely try and make sure you're playing in melee so that you're avoiding the grip and the tenderizing smash it will make the boss much easier so next then we're on to the last boss more dretha and this boss is an absolute savage she um, is definitely a pug killer again, it is really, really hard. And if you don't reach this point with a couple of combat reses left, often you're just going to wipe. The way that the boss works, really, it's a bit of a race from 50% HP when the fight gets much, much harder. And it's really, really hard at that point. And if you lose a player, then that phase is going to take longer. And because that phase is taking longer, you're going to lose more players. So. You really need combat reses and you need to be able to burst through the, the last 50% HP as quickly as possible. So the first ability which you want to watch out for and is active in the first phase of the boss, so when she's above 50% HP, is this Dark Devastation. So it's a big frontal that does a lot of damage and you'll just die if you get caught by it. Make sure that you're always paying attention to where that frontal goes. Um, it's by far the biggest killer on this fight. Next, so this Grasping Rift, sometimes it's paired with adds, sometimes it's not. So you can see here, it just spawns and pulls you towards it. Make sure you're running away from the portal. Um, the Grasping Rift, like I said, will sometimes be paired with adds. The adds don't have a lot of HP, but they do have casts that are dealing damage. And they also, yeah, so here you can see, they do damage uh, around where you are, so you can't group up too tightly or else you're going to do a lot of damage to your party members as well so watch out for that it gets really tricky when it's paired with the grasping rift because obviously you're getting pulled around whilst having an aoe around you so you want to try and make sure you're giving other party members space um but yeah this is the phase where it gets much harder so this echo of carnage here basically it's a race against time because below 50 percent hp you can see here you get these uh, dueling white circles on the floor which if you stand in are going to one shot you there's then also white mobs running across the arena the charge so you can see here this charge will one shot people um, I even though I'm watching out for it and I'm watching out for where the dark devastation is I get caught in a really tough spot there and immediately have to press bubble so it's just sort of random chance where the uh, white swillies on the floor spawn and where the charges spawn as well and it can be really hard to dodge so you can see here the priest has died and i don't blame the priest for dying twice here the devastation can be really hard to, to to see where it's coming from you can see i almost get caught by a charge again um so there's a lot of stuff going on which is really really hard to uh to dodge so that's why i said it's a it's a race against time and you see here we're coming up towards the timer on the dungeon we don't have a healer alive we're going to start taking more damage and unfortunately we're going to have to pull the boss again we were incredibly close to being able to do this here so the tank is doing everything that he can to survive but unfortunately he's just not going to be able to and we almost had the damage so a few things going slightly different and we would have timed this first key and been on to a 19 but unfortunately it just didn't happen and we are going to deplete it one thing that I didn't really think about in this challenge is that I'm actually incentivized to say leave the dungeon here because 
I'm going to complete one of my eight keys a week. And I'm just going to go down a key level. Whereas if I just left now, then I would be at a 17. And I would still have a key to do because I've not actually completed a key yet that week. So it's something that I'd not really thought about. And maybe I'd have to change if I was going to do a series like this again. Um, obviously, I'm not going to leave here. I'm, I'm just going to complete the key. But this is a real like step backwards because we've used up one of our keys. And we've also gone down a key level. Normally it's obviously the exact opposite where you use a key up and you go up a key level. Um, but this is like a, a a double kick in the in the teeth, right? Um, so yeah, it's uh, not a great start, but we'll keep trying to push through it and see where we can get up to. We'll just speed through this boss again then. Um, obviously you've just seen it once at normal speed and um, there's no point in watching it twice. We, we got the boss down to 2% HP. It was just... Uh, a shame that we uh, we wiped. So you can see here, I actually died again. So that's twice in two pulls that I got hit. And like I said, I'm trying to watch out for this every single time. And sometimes you just, you get stuck between a rock and a hard place and like a charge hits you from behind. Um, so it can be really, really tough. But yeah, we do manage to, to complete the key, although obviously we didn't time it. Um, so quite a good score gain, but really um, uh, a bad key for us to do. Because like I said, we've gone down a key as well as completing one of our eight a week, so really not great. Um, we also got a piece of loot, we got a ring. Now it's the Crit Mastery one, which isn't great. We like the Haste one more, um, because it's not main stat crit, um, and we do manage to get traded it here, which is very nice. In terms of damage then, we did pretty well. Um, we managed to, to beat the Hunter and do over 10k damage, which I was happy with uh, for 255 IM level. On to the next key then, so this is a 17 streets and it went really well the team just did exactly what they needed to we performed pretty well as well so i was very happy with, with how we did um in terms of overall we managed to beat the demon hunter and it was just below 10k which for streets which is mostly um bosses is absolutely fine and we also managed to get the braces as well which are a, a big upgrade um it's like 30 item levels so great to see that the next key then is an 18 mist so immediately you can see we're already over time. This didn't go anywhere near as well as the streets. We somehow, I, I don't even remember really too much about what went wrong. I think we just wiped to uh, trash at one point and then here the hunt is dead. I then die. I don't know how I'm standing in the green stuff there. That's just so silly. I thought I was like walking around the edge. I was being clever. I was like, oh yeah, look, I've got a little path here that I could walk through. There's no path there. I don't know why I did that. Um, I think I was just tilted from already being over time again and going to be dropping back down to a 17, even though I'm already two keys in. So I'm going to be three keys in and back below where we started from at the beginning of the week, which isn't great. Anyway... Let's just speed through the last million HP of the boss. The Paladin and Mage actually play it really well, and the Druid, to be fair, the Druid stays alive for most of it. Um, he does just die at the end, but then the, the Paladin and Mage manage to finish it off. And like I said, we, uh, we were already over time, so you know that we deplete it. Um, in terms of loot, I don't think that we got anything, um, but I do just want to quickly explain that somehow I managed to mess up the capture area for the rest of the keys and that means that i'm gonna to have to show you zoomed in sections of the keys now i am also going to be able to flash up the damage meters for most of the keys at the end so you'll still be able to see both things on screen but you just aren't going to be able to see everything and it's going to look slightly weird um i don't know i'm going to start double checking because there's a couple of things that i've messed up in terms of recordings um it's just silly like i'm just ruining my own content i don't know how i've managed to do that um but anyway, yeah, the next key that we got was a 17 Spires, which we actually ended up depleting. And then we had to basically time everything from that point onwards to be able to time a 20 this week. So we have to time a 16, a 17, an 18, a 19, and a 20 to be able to get it done this week. Ah, yes, a slightly zoomed in view, absolutely peak well content. Um, it actually doesn't look too bad. I should maybe zoom my camera in a bit more when I'm playing, rather than just playing at max camera distance. I don't know. 
Let me know what you think. Let me know if you think that the zoomed in uh, view is actually better or not. I mean, not that zoomed in, Jesus Christ. I don't know how I could see anything there. That's one thing that I hate about this dungeon. I'm so glad that it's leaving. The wings from whoever it is, I can't remember, is it uh, the person from the uh, Kyrian Order Hall? I don't know. I think it is. But anyway, those wings are really annoying, so I'm glad this dungeon's leaving because of that. Um, in terms of loot, we didn't get anything, and we can't see the damage meters, but we definitely topped the damage with over 20k damage done. You know, you've got to trust me on that one. Yeah, DK was kind enough here to trade us the Anima Field, which is actually a, a pretty good trinket. It's a, a haste um, proc trinket, so that's very nice. Um, the next key that we got then was a 17 Theater of Pain, which, like I've just mentioned, it's crunch time. We have to time every single key that we do from here on out. And we actually managed to sit in the queue for like two hours for this year. I'm not even joking when I say that. Two hours. I wanted a good group. And we actually ended up... I was just taking random as at the end. I was sick of it. But I think it's because... It, it, honestly, after like 15s and 16s, people aren't queuing up for their weekly content anymore. And like 17s, 18s, no one really cares about. 19s, 20s, people are trying to get towards like that 3k rating and getting the, uh, getting the conduit slots. But... 17s are just this weird range where no one really wants to join. So yeah, it took us ages to find someone for the top. But we did manage to get a team in the end. And let's see how it went. It went good. We did manage to time it. Which, like I've said many times before, is all we need at this sort of key range. Time of the 17 gives us an 18. We have to time the 18, time the 19, time the 20. It's simple. It's simple as that. Just time stuff right. Just do it. Just get it done. Um... I don't know. Sometimes you just get lucky groups, sometimes you don't. This again was uh, super clean. Note that I think everyone in here was an alt, so like everyone had main score and was a big part of the reason why I ended up taking them, so that definitely worked really well. And as you can see here, I was asking because I was like, come on, I want these players to stick around and do the 18 with me, because um, I know that we're just going to time the 18 if they come with us. And thankfully they do, the, the DK needed to leave, but because the other four players stayed, we managed to get a tank in pretty quick. Like, you know, most of the time tanks are going to go, oh, look, there's a group there with a tank slot. Let's apply to that. Um, so it, it went much quicker. In terms of loot then, we uh, we didn't get anything, and obviously you can't see the damage meters, so I can just lie to you and say I did 30k damage overall, um, and it was... Uh, yeah, me who carried the dungeon. I think for the next dungeons, I do have clips of the... Uh, of the damage meters, so I will be able to show you the, the damage from then on. We managed to keep most of the group together, like I mentioned then, so other than the tank, we kept the, the same DPS and the healer, um, which was great. I mean, they were all alts, like I said, and again, we played the key really smoothly. Um, honestly, it's uh, a massive thing when you, when you get a group like this and you trust them, just trying to keep them around. If everyone's still up for doing keys, then just do keys with them, you know? In terms of loot then, we didn't get anything useful, and for DPS we managed to get over 10k overall, so managed to just be out the monk, which I was very happy with. Obviously that was a bit of a drop off from the 30k overall that we managed to do before, but I was happy with that. I felt like we, uh, we played pretty well. For the key then, we managed to get a 19 gambit, which is huge. Um, Gambit's a great key for Tyrannical Weeks, so very happy with that. Keeping the uh, zoomed in content alive then. We did absolutely fine. Like, I was really surprised again. At this point, I was like, oh, I'm going to spend a bit more time. I'm going to make sure I get a really good group. And then we queued up for 19 and everyone started applying again. The the top, which I waited around ages for, was still at peak hours as well. It wasn't like I was playing off peak hours. I think just that 17 number, no one wants to see. Like, 17s, 18s, people don't want to play. Um, whereas the 19s, I got people to sign up for and uh, it went really well. Um, in terms of loot then... We didn't get anything, and unfortunately the, the DK had somewhere to be, so I didn't manage to get traded the chest. And for DPS, we did okay, 13.3k overall. Um, pretty happy with that. Like, it's not the best, but um, I felt like we did well. And especially for Tyrannical Weeks where red doesn't really shine, um, I, was, I was very happy with that. The next key that we got then was an absolute blessing, a 20 necrotic. So can we make it? Who knows? Spoiler. We did make it, and we did manage to complete the series. 
which I was really happy with. I mean, like, honestly, pushing a 20 within three weeks on a threshold without any help from mains, any help from friends, 250 item level, or sorry, 255 item level, like, it's no joke, it can be pretty hard to do, and um, keeping up with most of these players, you know, the players around this sort of level, they're all in 275 item level gear, right? Like, it's just everyone's in high item level gear, and we're still managing to keep up with them. So, you know, Red's not that much of a joke. I mean, I say that, obviously, <coughs> I don't think Red's like the worst perceived DPS. I think it's probably something like Assassination Rogue or Feral, to be honest. But even Feral, like, you could bring Feral into like 20 to 25 keys easily and they'll perform. You just probably can't push like 30s and 31s, you know what I mean? But in for, for most of us who are playing, it's absolutely fine and still brings a lot to the groups. For Rhett specifically, I'm definitely going to try and bring more Rhett's into keys. If I'm playing on my Windwalker, for example, um, I'm, I might try and bring more Rhett's. Although, having said that, the difficulty with playing Windwalker is that you're taking up that slot where you don't really bring anything to the groups. You don't bring Combat Resin, you don't bring um, Lust either. So you have to then try and get that with the remainder of your group. And sometimes it can be quite hard. You can't really take anything you want in the DPS slots because then that forces you into DKL, Bear Tank and Resto Shaman and then you're going to take hours to form the group. But in those off chances where, say, you get a Resto Shaman fairly early and you know you've got an open slot in the DPS um, slot so you could bring Rhett at that point already. Um, and yeah, Rhett's, like, if they're Rhett's and they're pushing like between 20s and 25s, all they have done last season, obviously we're going to be a new season soon, you know they're going to be good because they main it, they love the spec, and they want to make the most out of utility, most likely, and they want to try and make an impression on people, so they're going to be bopping, they're going to be using lay on hands. Um, no one's playing Rhett because it's flavor of the month, if you know what I mean. I mean, anyone who's playing Rhett loves the spec, so I'm, uh, I'm definitely going to try and take more of them in the future, um, as long as uh, they actually apply. I, I, don't, I didn't really get many opportunities, I don't think, with my... Uh, Windwalker Puggin series. I did take a couple, and at this one that definitely stood out in like a 22 gambit that out damaged a warlock, kept up with me, um, and played really, really well. Again, just the that sort of Swiss Army knife utility that the rep brought um, with Bob, with Leon Hands, with Sack uh, was was class. Um, it was it was really, really useful in that key. So yeah, I'm, I'm more than open to to bringing them into keys in the future for sure. Anyway, that's it. We've managed to get a 20 key done. We've done a Necrotic Quake and we've got the portal, which is crazy. Um, but I mean, we've done it just by the skin of our teeth, mine. So this is pretty much the last opportunity that we had. And we did it on the last key of the week. So this was the, the eighth key and uh, we managed to get it done. So in terms of our overall performance then, we did okay. I mean, we got carried by the, the Windwalker and the, the Warlock, really. Um, but this dungeon, there's a lot of time on bosses and I was trying to funnel most of my damage into bosses just to make sure that uh, we got them down. It's the hardest part of the dungeon, really. So, um, yeah, we we did, weren't really, like, padding on AoE. Um, but in terms of overall, then, I think the series has been pretty fun. I've definitely enjoyed it. Um, and I think I'm going to try and do more of these shorter mini-series in the future, obviously, with the new dungeon pool and everything. Um the, I'm still going to have like a main series, so I'll have my Windwalker and I'll be doing uh, the Season 4 dungeons on that and doing more of a, an in-depth review there. Um, but otherwise, I'll uh, I'll try and do some more of these mini-series just to try and test and see what other classes and specs are like um, and just pick up a, a spec for a few weeks um, to see if I enjoy it and how I feel like it performs because I think it's a pretty good test, to be honest, you know, just setting yourself a challenge and see how quickly you can get there and what the sort of spec feels like through that through that challenge. Um, certainly I've I've found it useful to, to be able to try and measure up Rhett. Um, so with all that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the series. Um, like I said at the start, please drop me a, a thumbs up and a subscribe if you, uh, if you can. That would be super helpful. And uh, let me know in the comments what you think as well. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. I'll see you guys in the next one.